Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Winter has definitely set in, so I'm going to go ahead and build a kite, because that makes logical sense. The reason for this is I've got a need to t drop test some things, uh, specifically this airplane here that you can see in the corner of the frame. I've got a glider rocket that I need to test and various other things that need just some good drop testing. So, I'm going to build a box kite. I was reading that for any given size, generally they have some of the highest lift coefficients, so that's really good. I've got four dowel rods that are a quarter inch uh, in diameter and four feet long. So my plan is to build a kite, obviously that's four feet long, but my cross section, I plan to build it either in four to one or three to one. So this will be somewhere between 12 and say 16 inches. I'm not quite sure yet. What I do know is I was reading that for stability's sake and everything. Now, bear in mind that pretty much you can build any shape into a general box kite. I was doing some research and there are just unbelievable, really crazy shapes out there. I'm sticking with a basic um, rectilinear shape here. What I plan to do is cover it such that the center half here, so there's going to be 24 inches of open space. There'll be a covering there and a covering there. And of course the dowel rods will run along here and then there'll be some cross brace pieces at midway points down the line to keep it in its uh, rectangular form. Well, I've never built a box kite before, but I'm really looking forward to it. This will be quite an adventure. Let's get to it. So I've got my quarter inch dowel rod here. They're 48 inches long. I've cut diagonal braces, uh, 20 and 5 eighths. I've marked the ends of my long pieces, 6 inches from the end. I'm going to try to get away with just two sets of diagonal braces rather than four. So now I'm going to go ahead and just tape this on at my 6 inch mark. That's actually a really solid joint. I'm going to do this flat against the table to make sure that the next piece is in the same plane as the first one. The skin of the kite should keep the whole thing from um, racking. You're becoming a parallelogram. I can't do this yet because if I assemble both of these grids, they're not going to fit together. One of them needs to be inside the other to hold it together so that I can lash them. So let me go ahead and put the other one down here first. Now I'll lay this one inside of that one. I'm going to cheat it over a little bit because I want it to be a tight fit between the two frames. And there we have it. Two frames that are locked together. I'll mark the centers now of my cross pieces and lash them together. Cutting your dowels is pretty easy. You just make a mark of where you want to cut it, lay your blade across it, press down and give it a roll. And then they'll come right off with just a little bit. It leaves a nice clean edge. So if you can see what I did here is I've got my two cross pieces now. I've lashed them together with some cotton string in the center. And now what I'm going to do is put these pieces in here that I just made to form my leading edge. And this will help keep this square as well. I tried putting string around the front, thinking that these braces would be enough, uh, and it deformed too much. So I'm going to have to put these in there. It'll get a little bit heavier, but I plan to use a uh, lighter weight fabric than I intended anyway. Probably like a trash bag or something extremely lightweight. Yeah, that makes a nice strong joint. Okay, I'm going to just finish this up on these last two. We'll be right back. I've got one half of my kite skin now. I simply used a 39-gallon trash bag to do it with. It made it really uh, lightweight, cheap, basically was free. You can see in there that I've got my cross pieces lashed together. I did have to put diagonal bracing around the edges because the entire thing, you know, since it's a giant rectangular prism, wanted to uh, rack, you know, or become a giant parallelogram. So that's why my sides there 
around my skin have those diagonal braces all the way around. Um, I also then put string my leading edges I'll show you here on this end my leading edges here do have a support now so there's three sixteenths dowel around the corners of the front and the back uh, edges so I've got three sixteenths crossbars and then my my main rods here are a quarter inch that's probably a bit much but I'd rather go a little bit over and not have it break this whole thing's still fairly light so the next uh, order of business will be to measure down here 12 inches and I'm going to wrap a string around right here so that I don't have to put a second set of dowel rods. I'm not going to put cross braces up here because I don't need it anymore. The skin on that end and the fact that it's got the cross bracing uh, keeps this whole thing fairly square and I don't want to add the additional weight of four more uh, cross pieces around here. So I'm going to use string here. This end here is going to be the, the leading edge because it's uh, lighter weight, so it's naturally going to want to hang down such that that end um, will be the natural trailing edge. So I'm going to wrap the string around here, and that'll give me something to wrap this uh, trailing edge of this first panel around. So I cut my panels an inch longer than they need to be, and then just wrap them underneath, and then I've taped it in place. You can see on this end, it's pretty simple. This isn't very tight, of course, because it's just a trash bag around a non-precise frame of dowel rods. A lot of duct tape and string. But you can see here I've got about a one inch overlap, uh, five pieces of tape across this edge, five across the back here. There's a dowel in this portion here, and there's just a string over there on the back edge. Let me go ahead now and start the front panel and show you how I did that. I took this trash bag and slid it in half. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around this portion. I'll start by securing this top corner and leave an inch or so above where my uh, dowel rod runs. I'm looking around this top edge to make sure that it sticks up the same amount. This lets me know that my sides are square. I'm going to go ahead and tack it here on this corner. I'm not securing it at the very bottom because I have to leave room to install my string an inch up from the bottom of this. I tack the middle first, then I'll work my way out to each edge, and then bunch the corners up last. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap the string. I've made marks on my dowels so I know to keep them all square. And now I'll tape them up in place. Unfortunately, you can see the string does have a slight arc up but I don't think that's going to be much of a problem, so I'm not too worried about it. Well, there you have it. Now it's time to get my bridle set up and the control line. I made a needle here out of a paper clip. I'm going to poke it through right here and attach the front part of my bridle to this point right here. Now I'm just going to make sure this is tied on really well. So here I've gone one around my longitudinal section. Now I'm going to come up and over and go across my front bar. Now I'm going to go out and back around the other one. And then come back out my original hole. You can see here I've got a nice three-way grip around each rod that intersects at this vertex. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie it off. Now I'm going to do a very similar thing to the opposite end. I've got both ends of my bridle tied off. I've got the same three-way hitch at the top and the bottom. I've installed a bridle line here between those two. It's one continuous cord and it's attached by a simple little hitch right here at this ring. Now this ring here, uh, simply I found it's a spacer for a hard drive platters out of a three and a half inch hard drive. So that was a really nice find. It's really lightweight, super strong. And that allows me to connect my control line to my bridle line. Let me show you what kind of adjustable knot that I have right here. Because this is really critical because it's going to allow me to adjust the incidence angle of the kite. Okay, as far as this knot goes for the bridle, I'm sure you've seen this before. You've got a continuous loop that you don't have access to the ends, which represents our bridle line right here. It's got fastenings at each end so I can't get to the ends to tie a standard knot. I've got a ring here that's represented by this washer. 
Well, to get this attached to this and to still have it be adjustable, it's quite simple. We'll take our line, pass it through the center of our ring, like so. Then, we'll simply take this and push the ring now through the loop in our line, such that it starts to come back on itself right like that. You can see how that goes through there. And then we simply pull it tight. Now, the great thing about this is it's tight when it's got a load on the line and this can't slide, but you can easily adjust it by loosening your knot a little bit. Hold one of the sides of the line and pull your other. And in effect, what you have just done is slid the ring down your string. And you can keep doing that over and over until you figure out where on your bridle line here that this little ring needs to be. That's about it as far as building the kite. It's time to go fly it now. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.